Hey folks, Mad Creator, Uncle Duma coming at you from my hidden bunker deep within the bowels of the city. And uh, today, uh, well, last night actually, I had gotten a invitation to a, a chat by Cleveland Street Preachers or something. Uh, unfortunately, I was just getting ready to go to bed, so I just, you know, ignored it and then just decided to check out the video later on. So, I come back, I decide to see what was going on, and turns out he posted a link in a comment to my last video to him, which led to a video that says, Atheists Believe in Fairy Tales. Now, uh, let, let, let's see if I can help him understand a couple of things first, before I even start the video. Number one, the whole point of being an atheist or a skeptic is to not believe in fairy tales. That essentially we look at things like evidence, proof, you know, if you're going to make claim to something and if you're going to say that you believe XYZ is true, then we're saying, great, wonderful, let's see some evidence. Has nothing to do with fairy tales, has nothing to do with the imagination, we're just asking you to prove what you believe, whether or not it's true. Now. I'm going. To, I haven't like watched the whole video. I saw like the first few minutes. I said, you know what? It's probably better if I just do a reaction video. Now his video is long. I'm not going to try to be that long. I'm already two. I'm already a minute and thirty seconds in to my video. So I'll just be like going over key parts and everything, just to kind of uh, see where this is going to go. Although I already have a feeling I know where it's going to lead. Anyway, so Cleveland Street Preachers. Thank you. It was uh, a great day today, and it was so great. And I just had to come here and join you all and make a make some time dedicated to talking about atheism. Well, that's this wonderful of you. Poison that is spreading rapidly across the world, even in a way. Okay. He compares atheism to a sick poison. You know <laughs> where he's going to go with this. <laughs> you know where he's going to go with this. It's not going to be pleasant. <sighs> Moving forward. Okay. Apparently he's confusing atheism with skepticism. I understand that it's a very easy mistake to make where a lot of Christians are hearing what people are saying and going, you know what, that doesn't quite sound right. Do you have any means of proving what you're saying? Do you have a means of, you know, showing me where this might be true? Do you have anything that will back up what you're talking about? Because, you know, asking questions, being skeptical, not believing people before they show some kind of evidence. That's not necessarily a bad thing. You're confusing atheism with skepticism, but let's move forward. And, and how to deal with atheists, how to talk to atheists, and if there's any atheists watching, um, to try and help you because you are Here we go. mentally sick. So right there, you can tell that he believes that he is the epitome of sanity. He is the epitome of sanity. He knows the truth and will not be convinced otherwise. And you atheists, you horrible people are mentally ill and I can heal you. Moving forward. Sick as an atheist. Uh, every single atheist that I've ever talked to, every single one will at the very least deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay. How about showing some proof? You know, how about using a non biblical source to prove the resurrection? That's one thing you could do moving forward every single atheist why because if every atheist admits that Jesus Christ rose from the dead they know they can no longer be atheists there's no such thing as an atheist 
Um, no, it just means that somebody came back from the dead. It doesn't necessarily prove that your deity did it. But, you know, let's not confuse this poor man with logic. He's saying, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead and then them still being atheists. Because they believe in what they think is rationality. But here's the problem. I'm going to prove... Again, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with being rational? What's wrong with thinking? What's wrong with looking at things and going, uh, let's take a closer look at this before we subscribe whole hog to this nonsense? Because if it sounds too good to be true, most likely it is. So let's take a look. Let's examine it. Let's see what's there. Is there any way to verify this? You talk about rationality like it's a horrible thing, but that's how we build our civilization. We use rationality. Moving forward. Prove to you right now how atheists are some of the biggest hypocrites on this earth. And if you're an atheist, I invite you to take the junk that's you stuck in your ears. Okay, and, and listen, you are hypocrites. Every single atheist is a hypocrite. For example, let me give you some examples. Atheists call themselves free thinkers. We are. Ask an atheist, where do your thoughts come from? They say, my brain. Well, you're not a free thinker if your thoughts come from just your brain, because you're a slave to whatever your brain tells you. There's two different types of thoughts. There's automatic thought and there's free will decision thought. For example, an automatic thought is a thought where, say, my stomach is hungry. A signal goes to my brain letting me know that my stomach is hungry and I need to eat something. That's an automatic thought. A free will thought is a decision you have to make. Or let's say a thought pops in your head. Can you choose to stop that thought? Yes or no? Answer me, atheist. Yes or no? Well, I can choose to not think about being hungry because being hungry is a sensation, not a thought. There's a difference between the two. A sensation is something that you're aware of within your body that you know that something in your body is not quite right. You're hungry. You're thirsty. You feel hot. You're cold. You can choose to ignore that. You can choose to, you know, set it aside for the time being. It, that's different. A free will action, a free will thought, as you put it, is just choosing not to do, choosing to or not to do a specific thing. You make a decision right then and there. Am I going to eat now or am I going to wait 20 minutes to see if I'm really hungry? Or I can just go get myself a nice little candy bar or cheeseburger and I'll be set. Nothing wrong with either one of those two. You discipline your body, you discipline yourself to reject you know, to deal with your sensations for the time being until you can gratify it later. Moving forward. If a thought comes in your head, do you have the ability to cut it off? Yes. Okay. That tells me that you are more than just your brain. Your brain is not in control. You're in control. But you say you're a free thinker, but... Um, all of our thoughts come from our brain. Most of I would have to say all of them. Almost all of them. You know, there have been some scientific studies that talk about that different parts of the body do have some capacity to think, but... Or radiate some kind of brain waves or charge or something like that. But that's something that I'm not necessarily an expert in. I could be mistaken, but moving forward. Yeah, you say you don't have a soul, and the soul has the spiritual mind and emotion tied to it. So you're much deeper than just a fleshly brain. So there's, a, there's another example of atheists. Can you prove that? <laughs> uh, you're just, again, making a claim. Great. Prove it. That's all you have to do. Hypocrisy, okay? Uh, atheists call themselves, they, they, they love to 
say that they're the most respectful people. And I have never in I've my never life seen that. I've never heard an atheist ever say that. By any group of people, that the most disrespectful group of people on this earth, if you're a Christian, are atheists. Atheists, if you're a Christian, will say the absolute nastiest things to you. They will say the most horrible Kind of like how you called us all sick in the head and insane. Kind of like how you just did that, like, not too long ago. Like about, oh, wait, what? I'm not even three minutes into his video. <laughs> I'm not even three minutes into his video. It's like, just like you called us insane, like you called us horrible people. You judged us as, you know, being mentally ill and incapable of learning or incapable of thinking for ourselves that sort of thing where in your last video you told us that we were all demon possessed and controlled by these invisible little fairies you know that kind of horrible thing that you're saying to us um, maybe perhaps if you weren't acting so condescending if you weren't behaving like such a jerk maybe people wouldn't be telling you to kindly go F yourself just throwing that out there Moving forward. But if you talk to an atheist, they all are, would agree in promoting respect. So there's just another example of the hypocrisy. So, how do you? Well, some people believe some of people believe that respect is something to be earned. You can respect a person's right to have an idea, but think that the idea is absolute trash. And well, they'd be right. Once again, telling us that we're horrible people for disrespecting him, but at the same time, he's throwing stuff like that out there. Didn't Jesus say something in Matthew chapter 7, talking about doing unto others as you would have them do unto you? If you want to be spoken to with respect, maybe you should talk to people with respect. You're the person believing the Bible. You're the person believing in Jesus. You're the person believing in the Gospels. How about you demonstrating some of what Jesus told you to do before you can lecture us about being disrespectful? Because clearly, you're demonstrating that you're not capable of being respectful. So why should anybody respect you? Why should anybody give you the benefit of the doubt? Moving forward. Na okay, a name a fairy tale that you think we believe. You know, I know you, you, you'll probably come out with evolution. Okay, well, not every atheist subscribes to evolution. Not every atheist subscribes to Big Bang Theory. Moving forward. <laughs> okay, moving forward. That's a vast oversimplification of the Big Bang Theory. There's actually a lot more to it. Um, but no, it didn't just pop into the universe, just like a magic man in the sky didn't go, poof, universe, in seven days. An omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing being just poof the universe together, although it took him seven days to do it. But no, that's a vast oversimplification of a very complex theory that, you know, you evidently don't know enough about. By something smaller than the naked eye can see. And yet somehow, the space that it exploded into was just there. You do understand that Space is just the absence of matter, right? It's just the absence of something. Okay? Let me demonstrate. This bottle here 
is relatively empty, except for a little bit of water left down here. There's space. Look, space in here. I can stick my finger into this. This is space. Look, space. That means matter can go in here. That means matter can just fill that up. If I wanted to, I could just take water and fill this empty space. All That's all space is. It's emptiness. There's nothing <laughs> extraordinary about space moving forward. Well, some of us don't necessarily know. Some of us have a working hypothesis. But, you know, it's no different than an invisible magic man that can never be spoken to except by, a, by people that claim to speak for him showing up. Nobody knows where he's from. Nobody knows who his parents are. Nobody knows, you know, what he, where he came from or how he got to be where he was. And all of a sudden, magically going poof, and seven days later, there's an entire universe. Matter. 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 This is why we have no respect for you because you continue to insult us because we don't believe in your little fairy tales. And you're trying to win us over by insulting us? Really? You're trying to show us how much you care by talking down to us and acting like a whole bunch of, uh, you know, I, 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 there's a word I want to use, but I, I'm going to try and keep this PG. Do you understand the flaw in your th in your thinking, or are you just spouting stuff off because you had a bad day and you want to take it out on somebody? I'm going to go with the latter. And atheists are some of the hardest hardest um, people to talk to. Some of the most stubborn, prideful, ridiculous. Please hold up a mirror. <laughs> Please hold up a mirror and say that. Please do that. Please just hold up a mirror when you say that. Seriously, hold up a mirror when you say that. Ugh. Just hold up a mirror. Sir, take a look at yourself. Take a look at yourself when you're saying... I'm not, I'm almost five minutes into his video, into his video, my video is already going on 18 minutes, I'll probably stop at 19 or 20. How long have you been an evangelical? <laughs> because I can tell you that there are some evangelicals that would put atheists to shame. Uh, and this is coming from a guy that used to be an evangelical. I can tell you there are people that would put atheists to shame in terms of being hard-headed, stubborn, disrespectful. Hell, you're like in the top ten right there. And I've evangelized millions of people by the grace of the Lord. He's evangelized millions of people by the grace of the Lord. Millions. I'll say that it's entirely possible for him to have evangelized millions. You know, he's probably thinking of himself as some kind of Billy Graham or some nonsense like that. That he thinks he goes into a crowded street and he thinks he's reaching millions of people. Entirely possible. But at the same time, I'm beginning to see why he doesn't make as many converts. Provide evidence, provide proof, 
demonstrate what you're saying is true outside of your holy book. That's all you have to do. Just provide evidence. Back and, 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 and listen to their lies after lie after lie? Or do we tell them the truth? I, I care for these Indians. I have to tell them the truth. I say, hey. By calling us insane? Yeah, you care about us, all right. I always tell the people I care about that they're worthless and that they're scum and that they're, they're nothing. Yeah, that's why these people love me so much because I tell them how worthless they are. Yeah, that makes total sense. Hey man, Mr. Atheist, you're mentally sick. And so essentially I'm going to gather that it goes on the rest of... I, I, I didn't even give him... like I, I barely watched six minutes of his video. <laughs> I barely watched six minutes of his video. But, yeah, you want to know how to reach people? Don't, sh don't show them how much you know until they know how much you care. That's basically it. You want to show an atheist how to, how to be converted? Simple. Provide evidence. That's one. Number two, stop talking to us like we're stupid. We're not. That, that's number two. Number three, treat people like you personally would want to be treated. If you were mistaken in some kind of falsehood, you would want people to tell you, true, but there's a way to go about it. And so far, you have absolutely failed to demonstrate anything that what you have said is true. You have also failed to demonstrate that you practice what Jesus told you to do, which is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That right there, according to Jesus, sums up the law and the prophets. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I, 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 I'm going to just be quiet right now. <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet right now. But yeah, that, that's the kind of nonsense uh, that came to my channel after talking about it. Anyway, that's it for right now. I'll talk to you all later. Have a nice day.